sound like him? Is good? Volume? Wise? Everyone can hear me? Okay. <laughs> so this speech could go a few different ways. You really have to pay attention. Please do not use the restroom during the speech because if you come back, you can miss some really crucial parts and have some weird ideas about me. <laughs> um, also, I consulted with a few submitters about the initial way that I wanted to start my speech. And I was advised against starting my speech the way I planned. So if you want the unedited, uncensored version, you can ask me about it after. OK, here we go. So growing up, I had an issue with white people. And I apologize for the memes, because they're just really funny to me. So just go with it. OK, so I would walk home from school as a first grader, and kids would throw rocks at me uh, and call me the N-word. Uh, in second grade, while most kids were watching, uh, I don't know, Gullah Gullah Island, uh, Teletubbies, uh, this is what I was watching. Can you uh, click the link, please? Oh, no. You had to go back. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Fast forward to high school. No, we're still in second grade, Maka. <laughs> Lisa, you go into the back. And uh, if you can blow it up. Okay, it's Connor, fun. Birmingham, Alabama City Police used fire hoses and police stops against children and adults engaged in nonviolent protests against segregation. The demonstrations were part of Martin Luther King Jr.'s Birmingham campaign. Television news coverage of the attacks by police sparked mass nationwide protests. This is a really short clip. Um, didn't want to, I wasn't sure what kids would be here, so I wasn't trying to really show them what the the realness of it was. So, okay, so that you was a. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Dude, this speech is gonna be awesome. Okay. Um, okay, so yeah, so there was this documentary. Uh, if you watch the Eyes on the Prize documentary, raise your hand. Didn't think so. So, yeah, so second grade. Uh, I don't know, my dad, he, uh, I think he thought it maybe like it would toughen me up or, or what, but um, no, it was, it was traumatizing. Um, and it was like this whole series that was on, I think it was like PBS or something like that, and they just kind of uh, talked about the civil rights issues and, uh, you know, and as, as a second grader, I was watching, you know, kids get chased by dogs and hosed down and probably wasn't uh, age appropriate. Okay, so fast forward to high school. Um, <clears throat> high school in the N-word. Uh, I really don't know why I chose that meme, but I mean, here we are. Um, okay, so um, in high school, and let me just say this, there is a point to all of this, so just, just hang in there. Okay, so in high school, I became more vocal about my blackness. Um, I, I mean, I was pro everything black. And there was an incident, there was an incident and where this, uh, this white girl, uh, we were in the gym in the locker room. She called uh, a black girl the N-word, and I lost it. I didn't know who the black girl was, really, like I knew of her. Um, she was younger than me, and I went up to the white girl, and I, I mean, she was shorter than me. I got up in her face. I almost punched her, um, and the only reason I didn't was because I didn't want to get suspended because I play basketball. <clears throat> and I scared her. I made her cry. And, uh, and all because I was like, I have to stand up for my homie, for my, 
with my sister. <laughs> um, okay. So, okay, so, okay, so, and I was like, you know, I need to let her know how ridiculous she is for using this word. Um, also in high school, I had uh, a lot of jobs, and one of them was being a waitress. And um, this is where I learned how to code switch. So who in here knows what code switching is? Oh, more than I expected. Oh, Riasha, how do you, Riasha, how do you know about code switching? Is it because I talked to you about it yesterday? <laughs> OK, guys, code switching. For linguists, code switching describes the simple act of switching between two languages in a conversation. But in today's increasingly multicultural, multi-ethnic society, the term's deeper meaning involves shifting between different cultures as you move through life's conversa conversations, choosing your communication style based on the people you're dealing with. So when you go to a job interview, um, you have to speak a certain way um, as opposed to when you're speaking with your friends. So an example could be, um, I do not like that. And if I was with my friends, I could say, nah, that ain't cool, right? So. As I was a, <laughs> I, don't know, I just popped in my head. I, just, I didn't write down an example, so I just, okay, we're just going with the flow. Okay, so uh, I was a waitress at this restaurant, and uh, you know, this uh, we had I had two customers, husband and wife, and they asked me because um, I was speaking very proper, and the guy said, um, uh, uh, "You sound so proper. I bet you don't listen to rap music, do you?" And I, uh, I said, I said, uh, you're right. I don't. I listen to country music. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I definitely lied. And he gave me a twenty dollar tip, and <laughs> we kept it moving. Uh, so I know why you guys are laughing. <laughs> it was just an experience I went through. Um, so, okay, so. These are the things that I kind of had to deal with uh, growing up and kind of, you know, um, just uh, made me think the way I did because I had a lot of experiences like this. Um, okay, so, but growing up, I, like, my dad really taught me about, like, Martin Luther King. And as I, like, started going to college, I was over Martin Luther King and I was, uh, I was starting to get into Malcolm X by any means necessary. Let's play it. <laughs> Please. Thank you. In case you guys don't know who Malcolm X is. Oh, you got it. Yeah, you got to play it from the beginning so we can hear it. The sound. It's important. <laughs> no sound? And uh, take a look at the uh, title on top. <laughs> I believe that the white man has done a great injustice to the black man in this country by having kidnapped our people and, uh, and brought us here and down to the level that we're on today. And today, instead of approaching the factors that their uh, original mistake has created, instead of approaching these factors objectively and realistically, the greatest sin that they're doing now is trying, by, is trying to pretend that they never committed a crime, that they never did any wrong, and when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad points out the injustices that our people are suffering, this, they, they, they uh, make that sin worse by accusing him of teaching hate or by accusing him of, of uh, black supremacy or by accusing him of advocating violence simply because he is pointing out the we real factors in the We got it. Okay. So let me, just, uh, let me just say we've been talking about false messengers. In case you guys don't know, um, I don't call him honorable, but Elijah Muhammad is a false messenger for the Nation of Islam, um, in case anybody didn't know. Just throwing that out there, I don't advocate, because <laughs> you never know, I don't advocate a Nation of Islam. OK, uh, I'm just giving you guys some history lessons on how I, um, like what, what are the things that kind of, uh, I don't want to say inspired, but like made me in go into this movement. 
Okay, so next comes college. And before I put the slide up, okay, so I was gonna put the, um, the video of Young Jeezy, but I watched it last night and it, I, I forget what it was called. I think it's My President is Black. Um, and I just put the lyrics because I was so embarrassed watching this video last night that I couldn't, I couldn't put up the video. Um, and even the uncensored version, um, I was like really, <laughs> I was like, I almost cried. It was just like, this is disgusting. Okay, so this was me in college, the movement. My president is black. You see his t-shirt. I was rocking them. You could get all the cool Obama shirts uh, from Berkeley and the hip hop stores. Um, and I was going to, you know, my civil rights class uh, rocking this beer. So I had to put some dot, dot, dots because there was some bad language. So I'm not a rapper, but, you know, he was like, my president is black. My Lambo is blue. No? Okay. I, I, I won't quit my daytime job. Okay. Uh, and, you know, my mama ain't at home. And my daddy's still in jail. I was bumping this in my car. Daddy's still in jail. I mean, I don't, I don't, this is a song for Obama. And I just, I mean, this was like, this is what I was into. Okay. And uh, no, it wasn't, it wasn't good. Okay. Uh, let me find out where I am. What's, go what's going on over here? <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so I was pro everything black. I would stand up for it left and right, uh, just like these people would stand up for their rights. So we have ACLU, KKK, they stand up for what they believe in hardcore. Black Lives Matter. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> solidarity with Flint. Uh, you know, the, the water that they're drinking over there is uh, nasty and people will be standing up for whatever they believe in. Okay, this is the fun part. <laughs> now we get into submission, the submission part. So now comes Aaron B. So mind you, keep, keep in mind what I've been talking about. Who do I stand up for? Black people. Th fast forward, we passed college three years ago this is black power, by the way. Um, <laughs> okay, so fast forward to, no, rewind to three years ago. And Aaron posted something on Facebook. And I, in my busy work schedule, decided I didn't like what he posted. And I'm going to stand up. It had to do with like race and, and minorities and kids. And I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a comment. I'm just going to give him a little reminder. And uh, it wasn't just Aaron. It was a lot of people, when I came to submission, they would use the N-word and would bother me. Um, it would just, I mean, even like, you know, they would say the N-word or they would say something kind of similar. And like, the Persians were racist. I was told not to say this, but I'm saying, I'm half Persian. The Persians are racist. I'll tell you one example. Who can, who can tell me the example? How are Persians racist? Think of Persian New Year. <laughs> huh? Huh? Nah, Baba, come on. <laughs> What'd you say, Kareem? No, no, no. No, no. Haji Farooz, guys. Haji Farooz. Baba, come on. That's a wrap. Okay, I was told not to say that. It's blackface. It's blackface. It's a, it's a Persian. Okay. okay, anyways, moving along. See, you, you say one thing about the Persians and everything. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, so it wasn't just Aaron. I had an issue. I had an issue with anything um, that people would say about black people. It would just really bother me. Um, and I, so Aaron posted something on Facebook, and I made a comment about it. And it turned into a sermon for Aaron. Uh, mashallah, it ended well. We're good friends. Praise be to God. He's my brother. Um, sorry, I lost my spot. Okay. So I felt compelled in my spare time at work to comment on how I didn't like his post. So this reminder uh, for this speech is for myself and for anyone who has strong ties to their culture. Was I standing up for God as much as I would stand up for my people? 
Was I commenting on Facebook and helping my brothers stand up for the truth as much as I would stand up for a black, pe a black person being called the N-word? <clears throat> so in 4140, oh, I can't see this. Okay, so it says he has instructed you in the scripture that if you hear God's revelations being mocked and ridiculed, you, sh you shall not sit with them unless they delve into another subject. Otherwise, you will, be, you will be as guilty as they are. God will gather the hypocrites and the disbelievers together in hell. So God tells us what to do when people are mocking and ridiculing his revelations. And I, and I had to ask myself, was I, was I doing this as much as, with as much like emphasis and as much, um, I don't know, like the way, passion, the way I was doing with when someone was just calling someone the N-word. Like if someone if someone called me the N word and I got all crazy and riled up and then someone said something like I don't believe in God would I have that same um, that that same reaction that God is telling me to have and I think I wasn't so that's kind of why I I wrote this speech and I I've been reflecting on 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 this part and thank God I think I've gotten a lot better um, this verse five fifty four um, oh you who believe if you revert from your religion then God will substitute in your place people whom he loves and who love him. They will be kind with the believers, stern with the disbelievers, and will strive in the cause of God without fear of any blame. Such is God's blessing. He bestows it upon whomever he wills. God is bounteous, omniscient. So I, I just, the part, it says, you know, and will strive in the cause of God without fear of any blame. I want to I wanna be able to strive more in the cause of God and stand up for the truth. And that's why I've been like, you know, even if I can't comment on Facebook, I'll like, and someone says something that supports the truth, I'll make sure to go and like it. Because before I, I, I probably did, I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna like that because it could show up on their feed and I don't wanna start this drama and I don't wanna get into it and I don't have time and excuse after excuse. But why are we here? We're here to, to, um, to stand up for God. Um, so now I'm, um, I'm at a point in my life uh, Hossein's not here, is he? Hossein. <laughs> this is for Hossein. So I honestly don't know why I chose uh, you get an engagement. It's probably because we've been talking about engagement so much. But uh, now I'm at a point where I can go to lunch with Hossein, and he calls me Oprah. And he will ask me every time, do you want chicken and watermelon? Uh, and I laugh at it. <laughs> I mean, that's just where we are now. And, uh, and it doesn't bother me, mashallah. Um, and that one was for Hussein. And I will, uh, I have one more thing to add. So in saying all this, um, God also tells us to stand up for our rights. So um, there is that verse that says, you know, if gross in injustice befalls you, um, to stand up for your rights. So Obviously, getting hosed and getting chased by dogs, all that civil rights stuff was no cane. People are allowed to stand up for their rights, but the most important thing that, that I learn is that we have to stand up for God. And if you stand up for God, God will take care of you. And like, I can't even remember the last time I've been called the N-word. And I think that's also important, too, is that when you're, in, when you're under God's protection, he will make sure there's been so many you know um, verses and talks about, um, I think it was Mariam Jean that you... Um, had the um, the Bible verse about um, the stone and uh, the stone won't you know touch your foot or you, what is it the dash your foot yeah okay you guys know um, and and that's what it will be like God will make sure that these adversities won't um, won't won't harm you um, so I'll end with all submit our lives matter. Aww. <laughs> So also the people, the animals, and the livestock come in various colors. This is why the people who truly reverence God are those who are knowledgeable. God is almighty, forgiving. The end. OK, so I just wanted to find out if I could get some feedback or in relation to your talk about Facebook, Facebook forums where it's like an extremely distorted type of talk about you know, when you cannot really handle <laughs> how distorted it is because you're trying to stick to the message. Um, is it 
okay to stand up for God and disregard those forums, some of them. I mean, there's some that I completely connect with by God's grace. There's a lot of reminders and great things, but we were talking about standing up for God, and that was one of the things that I have been sort of making, trying to um, fine tune within my behavior. Okay, so if anyone has an answer, or Natasha has an answer for that, there was some, uh, there's obviously there's divisions, there's uh, disintegration of some things that are happening, but is it being uh, neutral or is it uh, what is the what is the stance that people would take in God's uh, light with 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 regard to disregarding some of those like obscenely just distorted argumentations on Facebook? Yeah, that's a really good question, Asha. I think that um, the verse that comes to mind is says uh, the end of it. I says whenever possible, you shall strive, and I think that realistically, we can't be on every forum, um, you know, because you know we have lives, right? But um, I think it's important that if for my group of Facebook friends, I want to make it known that they know what my stance is, right? And that the people who I'm associated with on Facebook know this is what Natasha believes and that there's no question about that. Because maybe people are like, oh, like, I don't, like, I don't know, like, what does Natasha believe, right? Um, so I think as long as I make my stance known that I'm only for God, you know, nobody else, like, that's, that's my job. But, or if someone comes on my page and says something crazy, then, you know, it's, I feel like that's my responsibility to respond to that. Um, and then, I don't know, I just, because some people have so much time, like, like, I just see them, like, just going on there. I'm like, dude, what are you guys doing? Like, you know, like, how do you have all this free time to just be responding and responding? So that's why I just, like, okay, I can't read it all, but this one sounds like something I would say, like it and keep it moving. But you can't, you can't be on all the forums, you know? But I think that as long as God knows and you know that you've made your stance, then that's where I would start. And maybe more people can input on that. So um, my, I had a question for Natasha. Um, could you tell us, um, uh, you briefly mentioned something uh, uh, with uh, you and uh, Aaron, something happened and then you know it was fixed, but then um, it was uh, not really clear like the specifics of like what, what, what kind of, uh, um, what, what it was. I mean, we're just curious, I suppose, if you don't mind. You, he gave a sermon on it. Solomon? He gave a sermon on it. Yeah, I don't remember what the comment was. So Natasha and I had this thing going on, so every time I see people like make these comments about how the police beat them up, I watch the video and I feel like a lot of the times those people actually, they, 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 they created the problem themselves. So I try to be fair about it. So her and I got into a lot of debates about this. And then one day I saw a video where a guy kind of got beat up by the police. And I felt like he, he, he kind of, it was provoked. He, he had his part in provoking it, right? So I made a statement that was definitely racist. I, I, I said, later on, this guy's going to be like, or, or it was some to the extent that later on, this guy, oh, no, it was the, it was the video where the guy, they were, they were punking the, the teacher in the school. Right, and I said, later on, this guy's going to be out on the street getting beat up by the police, and he's going to be saying, I ain't did nothing. So <laughs> this is what I said. Like, it was not a cool response. It like, wasn't I was, funny in the moment. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 <laughs> We're and, good now, though. And Natasha had to be the one to see it, and it took me a long time to realize that I was wrong, and God literally had to make us meet each other at, a, at an airport in front of a gate with a number 19 on it for me to realize that I had to talk to her about it. So that's what happened. Shall I completely like I have no dispute about standing up for God and that should be your first priority always but in terms of like your yeah like mashallah you're able to find the balance between standing up for God and standing up for your rights which I'm glad you mentioned the importance of because I feel like as submitters even if like I like personally I have zero tolerance for racism and I think that as submitters, we should be setting the best example and like, realize that that is a form of oppression. And even like as a joke, I think like obviously you you know like you don't have to be offended by everything, and you can tease jokingly if you're if both parties know it's okay. But I don't think you should compromise with your own 
self respect at the end of the day if i don't know if like it's worth a discussion you know like personally i have like zero tolerance for racism and i think inshallah as submitters we should set the best example <laughs>